In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this 3D retro TV inside After Effects without using any external plugin or renderer. I'll provide a detailed explanation of the techniques used so you can follow along easily. Timestamps are included for quick navigation. If you just want the result, you can find the project file in the description. To make this easier to understand, I'll build the TV in a step-by-step -step manner. A real-world retro TV is essentially a cube with six sides. I'll create each of these sites individually and then add controls to easily animate the entire cube. Sounds a bit complex, but it's quite straightforward. So the first step will be to redesign the six sides. It sounds like a lot, but realistically only front side will take the most time. You can design this TV in After Effects itself with simple shapes like rectangles and ellipses, but I choose to use Figma because it's a lot more convenient and faster. I'll later transfer this whole design to After Effects using a free plugin called AUX. You can find a lot of tutorials on how to use AUX, but if you are still confused, you can ping me on my Discord server and I will help you out. You can take a defense of any simple retro TV from Pinterest and use it to design yours. Now that the whole design is in After Effects, let's set up what you will see inside the TV screen. Let's separate the screen shape from the shape layer. You can easily do this with motion tools. It's a free tool that I use pretty frequently and it has a lot more tools that always comes in handy. Now, recon the screen. Crop it to fit the shape perfectly using a region of interest. Then go to composition. Crop to region of interest. This will crop the composition to the dimension of the region of interest. Now you can put whatever you want inside this composition and that will be displayed on the TV screen. Now, let's put some effects over it to give it more of a retro look. We'll use the back TV effect over an adjustment layer, which is a little over the top. So to tone it down, we'll do some changes inside the effect. Now it looks much better. At this point, let's make sure our layers are named before moving ahead. Because we always label our layers. To start making the actual shape of the TV, we have to first change all the six layers to 3D. Now, switch from one view to four view. This will essentially show you view from four different angles. Front, right, top, and active camera, which is what will be displayed in the render. It might look a little overwhelming, but this will make things much easier to manipulate in 3D space. If you click the front layer, you will see its position in the top view. Let's leave this layer as it is and select the left side. Now, if you see on the top view, you will see this layer being selected. You can move this layer using these arrows and rotate it using these arcs. Let's rotate this to 90 degrees first. If you hold on shift, it will easily snap to 90 degrees. Now let's place this on the side of the front layer like this. To make this easier, turn on snapping. This will snap this layer with the front layer. But repeat the same on the other side. Now, if we select the top layer, we will see its rotation and position in the right view. Let's turn this 90 degrees and bring this right on the top. Repeat the same with the bottom layer. And now we have all the sides of the cube in place. And similarly, let's bring the back side in place. And now we have all the sides of our cube in place. To view this, go back to one view and change the view from active camera to custom view one. This view shows three sides of the cube. If you like what you are seeing, go back to active camera view. Now it's time to rig the cube to make it easier to animate. And there are two simple ways to do this. One is to simply make a new null layer, select all the six layers and variant it to the null. Or in my case, if you have motion tools, you can simply select the six layers and click this button. Now you can easily control the rotation and position using this null layer. The other and a little more organized way to do this is to preform these six layers and turn on this option. This option is called continuously rasterize. When you preform multiple layers, by default, they act like a normal layer. Let me explain what that means. If you put three text in a precom and render it, and put it back into your project, both will act exactly the same way. Both will have the same dimension, same alpha, same resolution, and they both will get pixelated on zoom. But if you turn on this option, it will act like a group of these text layers. It has some, it has the same bounding box, it doesn't get pixelated when scaled. And for example, if I add an adjustment layer inside this precom and add fill effect to it, you see these text layers are now red. 
which was expected. But if you go out and check the pre-comp, you will see that every layer under this pre-comp has also been affected by that adjustment. Because this pre-comp is acting like a group of the layers inside it. And now that the concept of continuously rasterized is clear, now you know why we turned it on for our group of TV layers. But to access other options, we still have to turn on 3D on this pre-comp. Once that is done, we can easily animate our TV using this pre-comp. This also makes it easier to duplicate and apply some effects like hue saturation and quickly change the hue of our TV to give it some variations. And it's done. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing. It gives me motivation to create more such videos. See ya.